but it's it's the important things for you to get that far in the office. So I inspired to And besides that, I
back into our initial shape, you can stay in that same area or you can come back to your initial position, that's fine. But we're going to go back into our initial shape. And then Commonality. And once you start sharing those commonalities, guess what happened? 
all the barriers that were there first start falling apart. Because now you connect to that person that you were talking to. Because you connect, now you can also have a better communication with them. Because before you have that barrier and you don't know what to give them and you don't know what you're going to get, so it prevents you from fully engaging or effectively engaging in the communication. So it's very important that you do your due diligence to be able to know whoever you're communicating with because it shifts the whole entire dynamic of the conversation. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about this when we get into the emo emotional intelligence um, slide. So now let's get into the real reason why we're here. We start to talk about communication. And we'll also talk about the different types of communication. So the first thing that I have for you is, what is communication? So what is that? Don't press it yet. Go back. <laughs> What is communication? The act of exchanging information. <laughs> okay, okay, I hear one. That would give me something else. Okay. So communication could be verbal, nonverbal. Um, it could be through visual. It could be it's everything we do with our voice, with our bodies, with everything we see around us. We communicate all the time. I might say, oh, like I like something, but if I'm making like this face, I'm like clearly communicating that I don't like it. So communication is a means for us to grow as people because we pass knowledge. It's a means to get to know each other. It's a means to get a job or to make a child happy or every communication is everything. You're like a dictionary right now. You're just laying everything out. That's perfect. I love that. Anybody else have anything else to add to that? Yes. That's another key word that's part of communication, listening. Oftentimes people communicate, they want people to hear them, but they're not willing to hear the other person. And oftentimes when I'm in a position where I feel like you don't want to hear me, why should I hear you? And then that's when oftentimes people clash head on issues that they could have easily just pay attention to each other and avoid some of those issues. So listening is a, one of the big elements of communication in addition to the body language, the verbal cues, even the way you dress sometimes, you are communicating. I, I asked this question when I was doing one session um, to another group, I asked, do you believe you are communicating with people the first, the moment you step out of your house? Yeah. yeah. Yes, you are. Because our society has these things where we start judging people the minute we see them. So you may not be talking to me, but I walk past you on the street, I'm looking at you, looking at me. We, our brain is processing some information about who you are. I don't know you, but I'm the hand, well, the way she dressed, or the way he dressed, I don't think she's well educated. Or uh, you see somebody wearing a suit, like, oh, he must be somebody. <laughs> that cross people's mind all the time based on the way you press and the way you look. So the minute you step foot outside your house, you are communicating with the rest of the world. Now, that's not a typical two-way street communication, but you are communicating. So those are the things that you have to be mindful of as you are exiting, getting ready in the morning to exit your house. You have to always be thinking about some of those things. So the formal definition we have about communication. So the act, the act of trans, uh, transmitting and exchanging information. So you transmit and you are exchanging. Because sometimes communication is one way where I'm giving you the information, another time is we are exchanging things. And then the process, the process by which information is exchanged by individual through a common system of symbols, signs, and behavior. So you do things as a group and then it becomes a common understanding that when we all in this position, this is what we are doing. So you are communicating without even speaking because you are adopting the same behavior as a group. Okay, so now we have different type of, types of communication as was, it was mentioned earlier. So we have verbal, we have non-verbal, we have written, and the last one which is claiming a whole different new meaning in social media. And we're gonna get into that in a minute. So, the first one is the verbal. So, what is the verbal communication? So, these are key elements you need to be aware of or you need to think of when you think of verbal communication. 
your words. What's coming up? Your words. So, careful choice of word, words that are easily understood by audience, colorful, rich, with meaning. So, you may have two people communicating or reading the same um, sentence, or sometimes trying to communicate the same information to you. But they will choose different language, different wording to communicate that. And the funny thing is, you may think one is boring, but you may think the other one is interesting. Just because of the choice of word, those two people have chosen in order to communicate the same message. Your vocabulary is very, very important. Because people will judge you based on the way you speak. They will assess if you went to school, you went to college, they'll assess you based on the way you speak. So if you don't have the proper vocabulary, even though it may not be true, they will assume that you don't have, you are not an educated person. So you have to be mindful of that, and you have to know who you're talking to. Your emotions, very important. Tone of voice, cry, laugh, sadness, happiness, shift in body, emotional intelligence, all of these go into a very important element of communication because Remember, what you're giving to people, people will take back. And we often say we use the word energy. So sometimes you may not speak it, but if I see you crying, my first thing to do is, are you okay? Because now I'm trying to connect to you at that low level. But we are communicating based on that. But if you are laughing, and when I'm coming to you, I'm like, what happened? What's going on? I want to laugh too. So see, that's a different way of connecting to that person before you engage in the full communication, yes? <coughs> oh, that, that's totally fine. Because sometimes you sitting in an audience and somebody saying something and you feel like they're talking to you. Just you in that moment. People have the ability to do that. That's part of public speaking. People have the ability to do that. You sit in that audience and they make you feel like you are the only one they are talking to. And the, the funny thing is, guess what? She's sitting next to you, she's feeling the same way. That day, just talking to her. And sometimes, those, those uh, communication will get you to a point where put you in touch with your emotions. No, I mean, like, first, you say, 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 you I don't know what to tell you. Somebody <laughs> might say something is wrong. <laughs> now, that's different. And they're crying. So I ask you, are you okay? And you say something bad just happened to me. And you tell me and I start crying. That's totally fine because now you're connecting to that person. The reason why you let me cry is what? Maybe you had a similar experience. And now that person telling you that just bring back all that emotion out of you. So that's totally fine. But you just have to be aware of those emotions when they come up because, again, the way you engage with people, those emotions may play a critical role. Because sometimes you want to say something to somebody, if you use the wrong tone of voice, oh, how many people here, somebody just came and you feel like they were too aggressive in talking to you? I think everybody at some point had that, that some experience where the person is just trying to tell you something that you're like, whoa, whoa. I, I, I think because I don't know what I'm saying. Because in my culture, we talk about communication, but people always feel like I'm going to get to that in a minute. Culture plays a very critical role when it comes to communication. We're going to get to that in a minute. Very, very important, especially here in New York, where we are a melting pot, where you have so many cultures that are equally believe me. And remember, people will also judge you based on where you're coming from without even knowing. It happens all the time. So that's part of this. So, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. And the way you pronounce stuff is very important. Not necessarily because you don't want to have an accent. I know I'm going to have an accent. I'm okay with that. I don't have any problem with that. I think it's an asset. Yeah. That's how I view it. So if you are an immigrant and you feel like you have a second language that's affecting the way you communicate in English, meaning you have an accent, remember, you have a second language that you speak. That's an accent. Not everybody can say that they speak two or three languages. 
So just keep that in mind. So oftentimes people feel like they have an accent, so they're not out to call. No. Don't use that to pull you back. But when you talk about enunciation, the way you articulate yourself, people need to be able to understand what you're telling them. So if you feel like you're speaking too fast and people don't get it, slow down. Yeah. And express yourself clearly. That's what I mean by that. So your accent should not deter your ability to communicate. You can still communicate, you just need to maybe speak slower than usual. People to hear what you have to say. So just keep that in mind. So the non the non-verbal and body language. So hand gesture. So you are you are having a conversation and some people get so excited you see their hand all over and they they're talking with their hand. You from far and you can pretty much guess how happy they are or how how ready they are to beat somebody out by the way they move their hands. So again, hand gesture provide context for the communication. You have eyes. Eyes are really, really important because they carry emotion. Because people looking into your eyes, they can sense if you're sad or if you are happy just by looking into your eyes. Have you seen people get eyes just light up about something that happened or they have a conversation where they're so passionate about it and the eyes just don't really change and you notice it the minute it happened? Because it's very important that you can see into that. Now, I'm gonna put, bring that back to the cultural experience. Now it's different from where you're from. Where I'm from, when I'm speaking to my elders, I cannot look them in the eyes. It's against the rule. It's against the rule. Somebody's older than you, you do not speak to them and look at them in the eyes. Yes. But here, but here, when you're looking at somebody and you're talking to them and you don't look at them in the eyes, they think you are disrespecting them. Yes. That's a clash of caution. It happens especially when you're an immigrant, you come from somewhere else, there's going to be norm in the new places that you're going to that you will have to change your old norm. But the funny part is, every time you go back home, you better remember that you're not supposed to be looking at them in the eyes. That's what it means. It's not a game. It's always high 
Look at somebody that tried to say what you're looking at. <laughs> So when you're having an honest conversation, when we talk about the eye contact is really, I'm talking to you in this moment, you're right. Here, when you're looking at people in the eyes, they think you are not being honest about what you're saying. So in a professional world, same thing. Why are you not looking at me when I'm talking to you? Again, in those setup. But that don't mean that everybody that you see in the street, you have to try to look at them in the eye. Because you're going to get you in some instances. Before we get to that level, 
You have to know yourself, and if you need that extra practice, don't be afraid to commit the time to do it. It's when you don't commit the time to do it that it's going to catch up to you. If you decide that you want to go, you want to transfer to a four-year college, you want to get your master's, you want to get your doctorate, you cannot go around this. I used to hate writing. I'm not going to lie to you. When I started my doctorate, there are a lot of reading and writing you have to do. It's not a multiple choice question anymore. It's not true or false. Nobody cares about that. Nobody's even going to ask you a question where you gave the easy choices. They ask you a question, they're going to ask you, prove me why this is X, Y, and Z. So you can just say, you know feel like, no. You have to go, read about it, study it, and then write why you think this or that is the way they are. So again, reading is very, very important as well as writing. So you cannot slack with this. One of the main um, concerns we always hear from the employers, so as I said, you heard service call, cultural call, all those programs that's put in that work with employers. And a lot of them, the first concern we always hear is just to make it to improve their writings. Because they feel like students still need more work when it comes to writing. So please make sure your writing is up to par. If you have a really good writing, it's going to get you to a lot of places. You can be the smartest person, you can be the most passionate, the most experienced person, but if you cannot formulate that and put it on paper for somebody to read it without seeing you, then you're not going to have access to opportunities. Because that's just how it is. When you look at resumes, <coughs> you apply for a job, again, I don't know you. The first thing I'm seeing about you is your resume. So I'm going to start thinking, based on the name, Believe me, go do this all the time. Based on the name, it's white, black, maybe Hispanic, uh, maybe African, based on that name. Mm, let me start. Where did they get their degree? X, Y, and Z. Wow, this is a very full of error. Where did they go to school? Who taught them this? The person who review your resume, all that is going through their mind. It's, it's just how it is. They go through that motion, and then they get your space. Oh, wow. You have five years over here, you have five, six years over here. Oh, I see you serve a lot of people in this position. Does that work for our company? But they have to go through some of those initial process before they get to your job. Because sometimes when they see all those errors in your resume, they don't even bother to see if you have the experience or not. You go in the path. That's it. And then I'm like, uh, no, I'm back. <laughs> and he was like, well, um, I'll call you. Because everyone there was, I was like, when I get there, I was like, when I get there, I was like, oh, I don't belong here. Because it was like, oh, my. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you're going to go through that a lot life too. That's part of the real world. Yeah. People who think you are somebody else because they painted that picture of you. When you show up and that picture is different from who you are, they, are, they seem so disappointed. It's yeah. almost like they're not thinking about the skills you presented to them that they like anymore. Just by looking at you, yeah. they're like, man, I thought this like, person was this type of person. Oh my gosh, you're so experienced, but um, no, we're, we're not looking. Right now. Yeah. We're looking. I'm like, okay, thank you very much. The one thing that I'll say about that is you check all the right boxes. The fact that they were shot because you're a different color, oh, I rather that. That I show up and then they say, well, you need to improve your writing. You this you are lucky because we didn't have anybody else, but you see the closest one. That's why we call you. You don't want to hear that. Yeah. So keep that in mind. You gotta always keep your standard really, really high when it comes to writing. Yeah? Yeah, social media, web platforms, very, very important. A lot of companies are doing this nowadays. When you apply for a job somewhere, it's where they do their first initial screening on social media, they Google you. If you are that party with drinks in your hand, uh, half naked, um, shirtless, head down, feet up, if you have those on social media, when they look at that, they say, oh, do we really want to have this person in our company working here? That's going to be a problem for us. 
But unfortunately, they will not tell you why. You will never find out. All those decisions that I'm talking about, oftentimes you're not going to find out that these are the reasons why you are being penalized. So you always have to do your part. You have to do whatever it takes to check all your boxes to make sure that everything is in line for you. So keep in mind that if you don't want, if there are pictures of you on social media you don't want people to see, you make your profile private. Don't let people come to your page. My best way is try your best not to have a picture at all because you don't know how people can navigate through things and still end up on your page and find stuff about you on Facebook, Instagram, try your best. Those are great platforms to connect with people. People are even recruiting people through some of those platforms, especially the internet. People will reach out to you because they saw your profile and you have the well-known profile that will reach out to you and say, your resume looks like you can match with this company. Uh, do you care to consider working here? I, I'm, I wasn't available that believe me. I don't know until it happened to me last year. Out of the blue, this recruiter, I always get emails from recruiters, they seem like those people are scam. So I never really considered them until somebody reached out to me. And when I saw the company they said they're from, I said, you know what? This, I would never consider even working outside higher education, but I'm going to give it a chance and talk to them. And it happened that it was the vice president of that company that was reaching out to me because they liked my LinkedIn profile and they want to see if I, was, if I can consider working in their company. So they do happen. So since that day, I won't take anything as a joke anymore as people just want to scam me. Yes, there's going to be people who will try that, but you always have to read everything, pay attention to all the details, so you can make the determination what's good and what's not good. So just keep that in mind. So I'll advise you, everybody can have a LinkedIn profile who does not have a LinkedIn profile. 